In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to compress images for your websites using free tools online so you don't have to have image compression plugins on your website if you don't want to. It is a bit of extra work, but you also save having plugins on your site, which can often help your sites load faster. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. First, we need an image. And if you go to any stock image site like Pixabay, for example, or a paid stock photo site, the images are quite large because they're really high quality. So if we pick any one of these, let's just pick this one right here randomly, click on free download, and then choose a file size that's going to look good on your site. Usually you don't want to go with the smallest, you also don't want to go with the biggest. So I usually stick with either the 1280 by 853 or the 920 by 1280 and those might change depending on the image, but usually I try to go over a thousand pixels wide just because most content areas on sites are about a thousand pixels wide or 1200 pixels. Sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're a bit bigger, but usually that's a pretty safe area to be size wise. So I'm gonna choose the larger one at 1920 and it's 581 kilobytes. Click on download to download it. And now we have this image downloaded right here. And now it's downloaded, it's actually 736 kilobytes, not the 500 and something it said on the download page. Either way, we're gonna make it even smaller. So the way you can do this is you go to this site called compressedjpeg.com. If you don't like this site for whatever reason, just Google JPEG image compressor or PNG image compressor or GIF image compressor, whatever image you're compressing, whatever file type it is, just Google that and there's a bunch of others as well. This is just the one that I use. They have a PNG version as well. Click on that, it takes you to a different domain name. This is now compressedpng.com. They have compressed PDF, sorry, shrinkpdf.com and they have an SVG version, svgoptimizer.com, ways to convert SVG back and forth to different formats. Clicking on those tabs there, and they have a GIF optimizer at gifcompressor.com. Our file is a JPEG file. We can tell by the ending up here, and right here it says JPEG, so we know it's a JPEG file. All we do now is make sure we're on the JPEG tab, drag and drop it into there. It's now uploading it, compressing it, click on download, and now we have our new image at a much smaller size at 476 kilobytes. So that's one way you can compress images. And there's another way, and that is using a tool like Canva. So if we open Canva, I'm gonna create a new design. I'm gonna make it the size of my image, whatever size that was, 1920 by 1280. Custom size, 1920 by 1280. This will allow the image to fit perfectly onto our canvas. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And I'm going to upload the minified one or the shrunken one. Let's drag and drop that right there. I'm gonna make a new page and I'm gonna upload the original. So I'm gonna name these, um, let's call it pre-shrunk and OG. Make these the full size. And this is the free version of Canva, by the way, not the paid version. I do not have the paid version at the moment, although I'm tempted, I'm tempted by it. I don't use Photoshop anymore because it's overkill for just images for websites. Uh, so I'm tempted with getting Canva Pro. Either way, this is the free version. Go to download for file type, choose JPEG. If you have the paid version, you can actually adjust the quality, which will greatly help with file size issues. But I'll just choose JPEG out of the box and see how the image compression is from Canva. Those are now downloaded. Let's unzip the zip archive. And now we have our two images, pre-shrunk and OG those back into our main folder. So I wanna see whether this compresses images even further. So we had our original, which was 736 kilobytes. Using the image compression tool online, we reduced that to 476 kilobytes. Then with Canva, we further reduced that 476 kilobytes to 470. So that's not much difference. And the OG, we shrunk down to 374. So we went from 736 to 374. That is half. 
the size. And that's actually more compression than we got from compressjpeg.com. So although I use this tool quite often, Canva actually provides better compression based on this test right here. Now you're probably saying this is still quite large and you're right, it is, but this is also a big image. So we could shrink down the size of the image if we knew exactly how big the image needed to be on the website, we could reduce the size down to that specific size, which will make our image even smaller. So let's say you found out that your content width on your site is 600 pixels wide. So now let's go in here, let's create a new design and the size is going to be 600 pixels wide, but how high is it gonna be? Well, for this specific image, we have to figure that out. So the image itself is 920 by 1280. So now if we Google adjust image size by aspect ratio or while keeping, there should be a calculator somewhere. I think this is it right here, the one that I use. So the original width is 1920, original height is 1280. The new width that we want is 600 in this example. This would be something you have to research on your site to figure out when the image is in the blog post, what is the perfect size for that image on your site. So let's calculate that assuming it's 600. Original width must be a number. That is a number. Let's delete it and type it out again. Calculate. There we go, that's better. So now the new one is 600 by 400. So let's go back to Canva. Let's make the size 600 by 400. Create new design. Let's upload our original one again. And this should fit perfectly in that area once we stretch it out. Let's grab the corner, keep the aspect ratio and it fits right perfectly like that. Let's give it a name of uh, OG 600. Download, choose JPEG, click download again. And now we have that image here and the file size is now 46 kilobytes, which is a huge difference. And as you can see, it's still quite big, like 600 pixels across is still zoomed in. 600 pixels across would be like this. And for a lot of blog posts, this would be a great size, but you'd wanna figure out what the ideal size is for your blog post and then shrink the image to those specific sizes because the file size savings are quite large, as you can tell. The OG was at 374 when we stayed at the width of 1920. Going down to width of 600, we drop way down to only 46 kilobytes. And we can see right here the resolution is still 96. If we were using the paid version of Canva, we could shrink that resolution by choosing JPEG and changing the quality, moving that down and that would allow the file size to be reduced even further. And so by using these online tools, you don't necessarily have to have an image compression plugin that you might have to pay for. A lot of them have free versions that last for a certain amount of time, but if you don't want to use those free versions because you don't want the extra plugin load on your site, this is a great way to compress images. However, if you do have image compression as well, if you upload this 46 kilobyte image, that's gonna be compressed even further without losing any quality because the image compression plugins are so good that we can get the resolution down, we can get all kinds of factors down without compromising quality and get this image file size even smaller than 46 kilobytes. Probably not that much, but it would be smaller. And another thing is image compression plugins that are up to date with the current standards will convert your images to WebP, which is a format developed a few years ago by Google to make images load even faster. That's another benefit of having a plugin. But if you don't want a plugin, you can easily use the process I just showed you to compress images for your sites and keep them loading quickly. And even though this video I did this one image, you might think that took a long time for just one image. You can do it in bulk. You can have multiple images in your Canva project and just export them all at once. You can drag and drop multiple images at a time into here. We can just select all of these and just go ping and it'll compress, upload, compress, and you can download all of them all at the same time. So you can do this stuff in bulk to save a bunch of time if you are going this route. This video is part of a series on my channel called the Plugin Killer Series. If you haven't checked out that series yet, there's a whole playlist for it right up here. So if you wanna get rid of plugins on your site and you wanna use free tools or free code to do that, check out that playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, also click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.